friends. It's Sarah, the owner and maker behind Multiverse Nature. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, big welcome back. I'm glad you guys are here for another episode. Make sure you grab something cozy or cool to sip on while you uh, listen and watch. And then, um, of course, if you have any projects you want to work on as well, I always enjoy having um, you create along with me as, as well as I like to do that myself. I love to listen to podcasts and watch podcasts while I'm knitting. It's so much fun. So without further ado, <laughs> let's get into what I'm wearing. So just a sip of my tea here. I've got, um, <clears throat> this is the Forager Sweater by Melody Hoffman. This is knit with Nutaden yarn. And this, I'm trying to remember the name of this colorway. It was the one that was based on Swiss chard. I believe it was from last year's collection. It had to have been last year because, and I think it was last year around this time actually, um, because I ordered my first and only order from, um, from Honor, Honor Ek Ak Air. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I ordered three sweater quantities and this was one of them. So it's very beautiful. Um, I did not try to make it cohesive. I was just going to knit from it and we'll see what happens. And it is a raglan. So this upper portion looks very cohesive. The lower portions are different, but they're similar enough that they don't look abrasive. They actually kind of look cohesive in their own way. It's kind of crazy, but I love that. And it literally has to deal with the colors. I'm slightly blinding myself. <laughs> I have... A very big light going on right now, but it is so dark outside. Uh, it the we have of course the daylight savings time <clears throat> this Sunday, so that is going to help immensely because the sun sets a little before seven right seven p.m. Eastern time right now, and sun doesn't rise until a little after eight. I think it's like eight fifteen or something. The sun rises in the morning, so. Yeah, I go to work and it's dark. At least when I come home, it's not dark, but it gets dark very quickly after I get home. So lights is what we're going to have to deal with here, but that's okay. That's what happens here in the Northern Hemisphere when winter comes and I should not say winter, not winter yet. Fall, but then winter. Yes, winter is coming. We know it. Um, <laughs> just so you guys know, I actually, I wanted to record and I didn't and I should have, but Sometimes I just allow myself to live life and not record, so I did not record, but on Tuesday, we actually got a measurable amount of snow. Now, when I say that, we actually had about three inches of snow here, which is crazy. Um, and, and not just three inches of snow, it was probably more than that, but that was what we could see. Like, it was puffy white snow, <laughs> and, and the only area that was not covered in snow were the roads, but everything else was covered in snow. Our trees were weighed down by the snow. It was very wet snow. And about 45 minutes north of where I work, so I work about about 25 minutes from where I live north, so 45 minutes further north of that, they had eight inches of snow. <laughs> and safe to say when we went Back when we woke up the next morning, it was going to be 40 degrees that day, and we thought the snow would just be gone. We'd just have it that one day, and it'd be gone. But when we woke up, the snow was still the same. Everything looked the same because it was so cold. It actually stayed really cold. It was supposed to warm up, but it ended up staying really cold. So we actually woke up to snow and then drove to work with snow there. And yeah, it's not the biggest deal. I totally understand, but I think mentally I was not prepared for it. <laughs> I was just not prepared for the snow. So it's okay. Now we are back to fall like weather. It is in the 40s. Um, tomorrow will be in the 50s. And then I think it's kind of going to be like that for a little bit. And then they'll start dropping again next week. So the evenings are still in the 30s. It's pretty chilly. But now we can see the leaves again. They're not covered in snow because <laughs> that was just hard to take at the moment. I just want to take in all the beautiful color and just that was not okay. <laughs> That was Halloween, by the way. So for those of you that are thinking, is that Halloween? Yes, it was. Tuesday was Halloween. And so Halloween night, when all these kids are going around trick-or-treating, they were literally trick-or-treating in a blizzard. And I kid you not, 
there were times it was whiteout conditions. Like you, you could barely see. So there you go. <laughs> Michigan. Anyway, now we'll get into the shop update end of things. So for shop update, um, not too much going on other than uh, Advent. Um, definitely wanted to let you guys know that. So we're now in the month of November. Oh my gosh. Ah, Thanksgiving is approaching. I'm not in a rush for it, but it's approaching. So we'll be traveling for Thanksgiving. We travel for all our holidays for the most part. Um, once in a while, we are lucky to be hosting, but uh, we definitely tend to travel for the holidays, which is always good. It's lovely to see family. I love spending time with family. So yeah, so we'll be traveling. Um, that's why I wanted to let you guys know. So if you do want to get any of the advents and open them starting December 1st, I wanted to give you a heads up that we are starting to get to that cutoff point. So obviously we still have a couple weeks. If you live near me, I live in Michigan. So if you live anywhere near that area, you will probably get your shipment. I always ship um, priority shipping so that it usually gets to you between two or three days. So I, I always try to do that. That's for sure. But I did want to let you know that, that if, um, if you live further away or you're shipping to someone who lives further away as a gift, I did want to make sure that if you wanted to send an advent that they could start opening December 1st, that you make sure and hop on over to the shop and pick one up. But, um, yeah, there's very few left. I do have like, like I said, one or two of prior years. Um, and those are 25 color advents and so 24 minis and one full size scheme. And then this year's advent, the 2023 advent is four sock sets that you can open each Sunday. We well, can open them whenever you want, but it's designed that you open them each Sunday leading up to Christmas. So totally up to you, but they're really pretty and they're a lot of fun and I cannot wait to knit with them. <laughs> I cannot wait, but I just want to let you know that if you are at all wanting to see the colors and ruin that surprise, but you just want, you really want to know the colors before you purchase it. Um, especially if like you're giving it as a gift or if you want it as a gift for yourself and you just want to know what the colors are before you buy it. Definitely. Uh, I do have a prior video. It's total spoiler, <laughs> but if you go to my prior videos and you'll see that I don't think I have an advent playlist. Um, I think I just have them, um, under, I think, podcast. Um, I'm like questioning myself now. <laughs> but if you look at my prior videos, it's just from a couple weeks ago. I actually did record a video of all the colorways for this year's Advent. And I also have last year's Advent shown in a video as well. So if you want to see what those look like, ruin the fun <laughs> of the surprise, the fun of the surprise. You won't ruin the total fun, but if you want to ruin the surprise factor, definitely hop on over to see that because I would love for you to um, to be happy with your purchase. Like if you want to know exactly what it looks like before you buy it, definitely do that. I That's why I did it. <laughs> All right. So that's for you, those of you who want to see it before you buy. So I just wanted to let you guys know that because I hate for you to miss out if you absolutely love the colors because um, yeah, that would be really sad. <laughs> okay. Now, and then we can knit together. All right, so let's get into the whips. So I worked on two projects this week. Um, yeah, I really just focused on two and I got quite a bit done on them. So we'll start with the half and half triangles wrap by Pearl Soho. This is using two colorways of mine, uh, Multifarious Nature colorways, and I am mid row, but oh well, it's the nature of the beast, I tell you what. Um, yeah, you can still see it pretty well though. I mean, kind of. <laughs> so the main, I finished the first half of my half and half triangles wrap. That is this Kismet colorway. I don't think I had that finished last week. I think I had done most of it though. Where's my progress keeper? Where is it? It's hiding very well. There it is. Of course, it's on the opposite end. <laughs> So here is my progress keeper. So I got all of this done last this past week into um, this portion. So I did this part where you knit um, 
well, follow you. you have to follow the pattern, but I'm doing the German short rose version. So I think it's, what is her channel name? Edible Thoughts Makes, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, she has a lovely channel and she has a tutorial on how to do the German short rose and that's what I followed. So I did that how you recover all of your German short, German, the German short row, the, I can't talk. <laughs> I just completely lost my, my voice. Oh my gosh. Anyway, <laughs> so it's really easy. I actually really like, uh, German short rows there to me. It's a lot easier than the wrap and turns. The wrap and turns aren't hard. But I feel like German short rows are so much easier because you just knit to your point, you turn your work, and then you move your last stitch back over to the other needle and then pull up on it and then knit across. It's so easy. So it just seems really complex, but once you actually do it, you're like, oh, this isn't so bad. So it's not. <laughs> so here is my strawberry shortcake colorway. I know these are going to get a little bit blasted out, but I wanted you guys to be able to see everything if I made the light too, um, too dark everything would look really dark. So there we go. So this is Starberry Shortcake, which is a beautiful tonal colorway. If you're looking for um, what I call like a Barbie pink, to me, this is a Barbie pink, also a Starberry Shortcake pink, um, as in the little character Starberry Shortcake. There we go. So yes, so it's a beautiful tonal and this is on my BFL base. So this is a BFL nylon base. And I have that base. And then I also did my alpaca. So I'm actually combining two bases. So the first triangle is the alpaca merino nylon base. So it's 20% super fine alpaca, 60% merino, and 20% nylon. So I am trying to work on a new name for it because I do understand it's slightly deceiving that it's my alpaca base. <laughs> I, I do understand how that's deceiving because the majority is actually merino base, but the reason why I really like to use that as the title is because some people, even though it's very soft and it does not bother me, there are some people, I know one in particular, that she does not like wearing alpaca because it does make her itch. Now she's never felt my alpaca, so I don't know if it would, but when she was at, I think it was Hobby Lobby, she had put some alpaca yarn that they had there and it made her skin itch. And so I'm just saying everybody's different. And so because some people are sensitive to that, I really want it to be in your face <laughs> with the thought and know that there is alpaca in it. But this is my alpaca base, as I said. So you can see there's a nice little halo on there. Super soft from the alpaca. It's a much fluffier yarn. Not that this isn't fluffy, but you can see the twist this is going to get a little blasted by the light, blinded by the light. Uh, you can see the two ply here. It's, um, yeah, it's a tight ply though. It's like very visible ply where this one is a visible ply, but it's not it's not as aggressive as looking as this one is. And you can tell too by seeing it knit up. This has very distinguished stitches where these are softer stitches. So it's just the characteristics of the base. I'm not saying one's better than the other. They're just different. So like this one I would say is much drapier because it has that merino and the alpaca in it. And then this one is drapey as well. Um, I feel like this makes excellent, both of these make really good socks, but if you want one that's going to make um, the more durable of the two socks, I would definitely say the BFL. BFL has um, a longer staple length, and because that is the primary base mixed with nylon, this makes excellent socks. So this is, um, I also have a merino Superwash, Superwash Merino Nylon Base is kind of my like go-to sock base that I have in the shop. It's 7525, but this one um, is that is that BFL base, and I love it. It's got it's 
it has structure to it. Like when you feel it, it has structure, but it's still soft and durable, but it's not as soft as like my alpaca base. <laughs> and of course the Merino is softer. <laughs> Agree. The Merino is definitely softer than your BFL, but look how beautiful that is. See that tonality? Oof, I love it. It's so much fun to knit with. I And it's a different type of yarn so it, it has a different feel to it as you're knitting so it's just so fun all that different feeling I definitely love working with the alpaca but I am enjoying this as well I do like my BFL and yes big big fan of it so I'm working away on that and we will get there when we get there I am not in a huge rush <sighs> not really but I am enjoying working on it though because like this past week, like I said, it was pretty chilly. It was in the 30s on Tuesday. Yeah, 30s and snowing. <laughs> Very cold for Halloween. So I had this on my lap in my car while I was eating my lunch and then knitting. So that was absolutely fabulous. And I wear one of my woolly sweaters. Oh, I love it. This is my, one of my favorite times of year, I have to say. Okay, my next project that I worked on a decent amount is, can you guess, the designer, Andrew Mowry. <laughs> the sweater is the birch pullover. So I did work on it quite a bit and you guys are going to be so excited. Are you excited? Because I'm really excited. <laughs> I found off the bottom. Oh my gosh. So amazing. So we've got a bound off bottom and I just love it. So the bind off is called, she calls it the Kitchener stitch bind off, but I know it more as like a tubular bind off, but I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, she called it a Kitchener stitch bind off. It looks like a tubular bind off to me where basically the stitches just like follow over the edge. So here we have it. I did the recommended length plus like a quarter of an inch. I didn't go too much further. I didn't because I am trying to keep in mind that this is a lot like brioche. It is a half fisherman's rib is the primary um, design. And so I know it's going to grow. It will grow. So I don't really want to make it super long because I know it will grow. And I've got that ribbing. I've got the amount of ribbing that she recommends. This is a paid for pattern, so I don't want to give too much away. But where my little progress keeper is down there, you can see that's what I knit. So decent amount. And then I actually picked up stitches and started knitting the sleeves. So that's exciting. I am, I switched from my um, larger circumference to my itty bitty nine inch circulars. So these are my little ones. They are of Chiaogu as well, same type of needle, just a small circumference. I did not go up a needle size. I know she usually recommends going up a needle size when knitting in small, small circumference, but because it is the... Um, losing my train of thought <laughs> oh, because it is half fisherman's rib I am not worried about and I think she said that too somewhere in the pattern not to worry about going up a needle size however I do notice something here and I'm sure you guys will I think I know what it is though but I still question that there is if you look at you can see it there's like it looks like it's pulled right here and I think that's where I picked up my stitches. So I'm sure when it blocks it, that'll kind of loosen up, but it just bothers me that it's kind of like this definitive looking line that's going around it. So bizarre. And I don't, I honestly don't know if it's just because of the picked up stitches. Isn't that crazy? But it wasn't hard. So she just said to make sure that your FG pick up for the underarm and everything. Um, it's, she said just make sure that your ribbing lines up and it did it did line up I didn't have to do the alternate way of doing it because she did give you an alternate way if you had um, if it didn't line up so that is very good 
I have another, I have a few spots like this where, I don't know if you can see that, there you go, where I got caught and I snagged it. It's very irritating. So all I have to do is just take um, my tapestry needle and go back and kind of tug it a little here and there to get that back into the piece. So that's a little irritating, but not the end of the world, not the end of the world. And I am very much enjoying knitting on this. So I just take my sweet time when I work on it. I don't rush and it's absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So this is using old mill, old mill yarn um, out of Allegan, Michigan. And this colorway is so pretty. It is a warm gray. And it came on a massive cone so I just so this is all I have for my first ball that I made I made a massive ball I didn't like weigh it to be 100 grams I just made a massive cake because I have a very large uh, ball winder <laughs> so I could do that and then I just caked up some more so this is a rather small looking cake but this is almost on the verge of lace weight so I think that's probably at least around ooh, 50 grams, I think. And I still have to just do a sleeve. So I have this much to do two sleeves. I obviously can might need more than that. I don't know. But I do have a whole cone. And you can't see it because I turned my cone tree around. <laughs> but I still have more than enough on there to make a whole nother sweater, which is amazing to me. It's absolutely amazing. So if you are looking for sweater yarn that is 100% wool and you're, I don't know, you're worried about spending a lot of money on it because it can be expensive. I totally understand that. It can be expensive. But I highly recommend Old Mill Yarn. I know I'm kind of giving away my little secret stash. I absolutely love going there. They do sell some online. So if you go, it's Old Mill Yarn. If you just look up Old Mill Yarn, Alec in Michigan, um, I'm sure you'll find it. And they have some yarn listed there. Their best deal, of course, is during a Michigan Fiber Festival. So if you happen to be in Alec in Michigan for Michigan Fiber Festival next year, you should definitely check them out. They, at least up until this point, have every year done a really big sale. And it's a great deal. It's based on weight of yarn and they give a great discounted price. So it's basically you're buying in bulk is how they do it. Um, they really cater to everyone, of course, but they primarily cater to weavers. That's why a lot of their, actually 99% of their wool and um, cotton and all the different fibers are on cones. They do sometimes have giant skeins like giant okay skeins of yarn i have two of them that i purchased i still have to i still have to break them down because they are massive they're probably the equivalent of five skeins of yarn so yeah i gotta be pretty much i think what i'm gonna have to do is put them around a chair and then wind them into hanks using my knitty knotty that's probably what I'm going to have to do just to make them more manageable. <laughs> but that is, that is that. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I know. Anyway, it's amazing. But they're really great people and I love supporting other small businesses. And um, Baker Allegan, I think it's Baker Studio Allegan. They're the um, sub also the supplier that works with Old Mill Yarn. They're basically owned by the same people. That's why I wanted to mention that. They're a husband and wife duo. So, yes, definitely enjoying that project as well. So, that's pretty much what I've been up to when it comes to knitting this week. I did not work on my other sweater this week, but I'm pretty sure I'll probably work on it this next week because the colder it gets, the more I like to work on wooly knits that are very wooly and warm because I would love to wear that to work and during the holidays, always up for more big warm sweaters. Okay, so I guess we'll get into life update. So 
You guys, I can't believe it. I forgot two weeks in a row to share my tragic story about my finger. Isn't that ridiculous? So it's basically healed at this point. But, yeah, you can't really see it. <laughs> but there's still, there's a chunk missing out of it. It's healed, but there's like a chunk of skin that's missing. So this is a, uh, I, I put it in my, I think two videos ago when I said I was going to talk about it and then I didn't talk about it. I put it in the notes. It's like a pub public service announcement. So for those of you that like to do canning, and this is for all of you that are newbies, I guess, because if you are a well, uh, if you've done it a lot, if you are a well seasoned canner, you probably already know this and you're probably thinking, oh, Sarah, but you know, we all have to learn some way and some of us learn harder ways than others. I fortunately did not need stitches, but, um, safe to say I tried to open a freshly canned jar of apple butter. So I made apple butter two weeks ago, <laughs> three weeks ago, and I decided I wanted to open that freshly canned jar of apple butter. Now, I tried tapping it. I tried doing all the things you normally try to do when you open a can of something and then you try to lift it, right? Well, I couldn't get the seal to break. So what did I do? Well, I did what seemed like a good idea at the time, which thinking back, not a good idea. Don't use anything other than a towel to open your can jar because I decided to use a butter knife and well, I got it to open. I did get it to open. However, I also opened up my finger on the lid of those can. Those canning jar lids are really sharp. <laughs> you can feel that they're sharp, but woo, they are sharp. So I got myself good and it was nasty. And uh, safe to say I had to baby the heck out of this thing, but I did a good job of protecting it and it is healed. It's a little sensitive to touch still. I do notice that, but it is healed up otherwise. But I just wanted to give you guys that. So yeah, my mom was the one to be like, Sarah, use a towel and she used a towel to open another freshly canned jar. And sure enough, that worked. So use a towel if you're going to need to try to open it. And that way the towel will get <laughs> the brunt of... <laughs> of the lid and not your finger. Unbelievable, right? I made it this far in life, but sometimes, you know, these things happen. <laughs> okay. So otherwise, um, a one thing I did this past week is I cleaned my knitting room and I would love to give you guys a little tour at some point. Uh, maybe I will record a video tomorrow since it's all nice and clean in here. We'll see if I can do that, but I do I want to give you guys a tour of my little heaven space. This is my heavenly space. I could literally just, oh, I turn on one of my little lights. I light a candle and I just chill and it's so relaxing in here. It's just so peaceful. It is definitely my happy place. So behind me, I still have all of my multifarious nature yarn. Um, but then over here, I do have like my stash of yarn. This is the wool section. So wool and spinning. And then I do have other sections as well. So I would, I'd be more than happy to do a tour again. I think I'll try to do that tomorrow. We'll see if I have time ah, and daylight. I want to do it when it's light out, but then I can kind of give you guys an idea. I got a really nice big tote of, um, yarn that was donated to me by uh, my husband's aunt, which is so kind of her. So I have, I have so much more yarn now. A lot of it is, um, acrylic. So that way it's great for donated, donatable knits. So that is something I want to make a lot of hats out of and things of that nature using my knitting machine. So I'd love to show you guys that as well. Um, yeah. And then the other thing I want to do, this is a goal of mine this year, this year. Um, if not this year, next year, I'm not going to limit myself to like, it has to be done before January, but I would love to go through my stash and cat like take a photo of it, each item, and put it under Ravelry. Because I, one, I really like to be better about going through my stash and working from my stash. Um, I am not terrible about that. However, I do have a tendency to go want to buy yarn. But I really, you know, to be fair, I should be fair. The only time I really buy a lot of yarn is 
Michigan Fiber Festival, you usually always buy yarn at Michigan Fiber Festival, or fiber, I should say, a lot of fiber. But the yarn I tend to buy at Old Mill Yarn, and I do buy a lot of yarn because when I buy it, I buy these massive cones of yarn. Um, but I was really excited the last time I was there. They had the coned yarn without the cones, so you're just paying for the weight of the yarn. So exciting. But yeah, and then I can show you my cone tree and everything and um, kind of go over that. But that way I can get all of that cataloged because sometimes things get lost and you're just not looking at it and out of sight, out of mind. And I would hate to buy duplicates of things. Um, I actually was worried. I was a little concerned that I bought duplicates of yarn when I went to the... So Michigan Power Festival, I went two days this year. And the first day I went, I mainly scoped things out, but I did actually go to the um, Old Mill Yarn sale on that Friday because that would be the first day to go to it. And then I went on Saturday as well. So um, one thing I have learned about the Baker's, uh, the Old Mill Yarn sale is if you see something that you want, if you're going to go two days in a row, just buy it. Just buy it. If you really want it, like you really want it. <laughs> and you would be disappointed if it wasn't there the next day, you should buy it because I did miss out, but it all worked out. It ended up working out because um, I, well, I bought some yarn and then the next day I went back, I went to looking for this giant hank of yarn that I had seen um, the day prior. And I asked the um, gentleman who owns it and I just asked him, you know, um, do you still have that giant skein of yarn? I knew he would know because I really had only seen that one giant skein. And so when I told him that, he he, he laughed and he goes, oh no, I actually did sell it. And I was like, oh, because it was, looked like it was naturally dyed and it was so beautiful. And so I was so bummed, but it was more rustic. And he said, well, that was actually very woolly wool. That was more like rug wool. Um, he said, so would you be interested in some merino like that in large skeins? And I was just like, my eyes lit up super huge. And so I actually then ended up with two giant skeins of merino, super soft, two different colors. And then um, I bought some yarn. I wasn't sure if it was a duplicate of one I purchased the day prior. So funny story, it was, but not identical. So the color is identical but they're two different weights of yarn. So I bought one that is a lot like this. It's like a light fingering and it's a cream, kind of a cream color. And then I also purchased um, more of a, I guess it kind of is more worsted weight. It's so hard to tell because on the cone, it's wound so tight that it's gonna expand when you actually knit with it. But there you go. So it's, I think it's worsted spun and it's, or worsted weight I should say, so it's going to be at least a thicker weight so I can make a sweater faster if I use that. <laughs> but that's, that's the funny part because I bought the same color, but just a different weight of yarn. So thank goodness it was a different weight of yarn. I would have been really irritated with myself if I bought two of the same thing because that would be a lot of yarn. I mean, those cones easily you could make two sweaters out of, so I would have had four sweaters quantity of the same color. The good news is if it's a cream color, I can dye over it, so... There's that, but the one thing is, is when it's on a cone like that, you have to skein it up first and then dye it and then, you know, re-ball it up and it's a lot of work. So better to not have to do that. <laughs> anyway, I think I've rambled on long enough, but um, yeah, if any of you have done that, if you've put your stash into Ravelry, I'd love to hear your tips for trying to like organize it, trying to make it easy uh, for you to find the yarn you're looking for, things of that nature, because um, in my heart of hearts, I like to organize. I do like to do that, um, but sometimes, you know, priorities, right? But I do, that's why, like, this is all my woolly wools, and um, I do put them together, so that way I know if I'm working from a project that I want to work with the yarn, that type of yarn, I go right there, or right here, if I decide to borrow from my hand dyed yarn um, to knit up a sample. So there you go. I'd love to hear tips from you guys. <laughs> I'd love to also hear what you're working on, what you're up to, and, um, and how you're doing, and I hope you are doing well. 
and I hope you are creating, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, and I'll chat with you soon. Take care.